Praise the Lord, Diary United Pentecostal Church. Um, it is so wonderful uh, on this Sunday to be able to greet you in this wonderful, precious name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord, our, our Prince of Peace, our Great I Am. Um, he is our El Shaddai. He's our Jehovah Jireh, our Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom. Um, and we could go on and on and on all day long talking about His goodnesses and His mercies. I'm so thankful that... Um, we have this day the bible says today is the day that the lord hath made i will rejoice in it and i will be glad and so um we do have comfort in this time i do know that we are still um uh, they are still requesting us to be shut uh, the doors of the church so that uh, we will not have any contagious spreads of the virus uh, which is both the federal and the state and the organizational um, request but um, we do hope and pray that you feel the presence of the Lord and in this time we want you to also know that um, it is a time to be prayerful it is a time to be uh, seeking God a time to not, I said the other night to be getting ourselves right with him um, these are times that we need to focus on um, preparing for his coming uh, somebody said the other day that um, it's it's not the time or the season, it, you know, that this is just a part of life. And I sort of somewhat disagree with that because this is the time the Lord is calling his people, he's calling the church, he's calling all of humanity to prepare. And if we miss that wonderful opportunity to prepare our hearts and our minds, this is the end times. This, I mean, yeah, we, there, there are more severities of things that will come in the latter days, in the last days. Um, this, this, this is the preparation time um, for that because the rapture um, will be what will get us out of here so that we do not have to go through that. And so I just believe right now that God is calling his people to a higher place in him. He's wanting to have revival in this last and closing hour. He's wanting for people to be ready and right. And so I'm just praying. I'm praying for us as a church. I'm praying for the city. I'm praying for the nation. Um, I just believe God is doing a, is going to do a great work like we've never seen before. Um, so even though we may not be together in the same building, we are together in spirit because we are the body of Christ. And I miss each of you. I miss my time with you. I miss our fellowship, which is so important as a body of Christ. And I just want and pray that, uh, hope and pray that you are going to be blessed uh, this day. That you feel the angels wrapped around you. And that you feel the hope of, of the presence of the Lord that's ever so near. And so, uh, I just want to pray right now with you. And then I've got a few little thoughts I want to share with you. Um, but just be of good courage today. Heavenly Father, I thank you right now for the people of God. You know that several of them have texted me with um, prayer requests. And I'm not going to mention every name right now. But God, you know those requests. You know those situations. You know each and every life that is affected right now by this um, uncertainty of times. And you know the 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 things that come up in their mind and their the fear that grabs their heart and how the devil and the enemy just wants to create that fear. But Lord, I bind every spirit of fear. I bind every spirit of sickness. I bind every spirit spirit of that virus lord and i release right now hope i release courage i release strength in the physical bodies and the and the minds lord i i release lord your presence in each life lord that will draw people closer to you lord that in this time will be a witness and we will be able to have hope in you afresh and anew lord i thank you for it lord i thank you for your people and i thank you lord that they have uh, this time together with me 
uh, to be able to look at a few scriptures, Lord. I pray that you would bless our time together, but most importantly, bless our church. We know that we are a small church, but Lord, you are trying to reach out to the community. And so pray, Lord, that you would just use this as a time and opportunity for us to do greater things, to be able to reach your people. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Well, uh, today I I don't want to really preach a whole sermon because I know you're probably not prepared for that. I may do that on um, if we do not have church this week in the building, I may try to do something like that on Thursday. But um, just continue to remember our prayer time on Tuesday for as the church. Um, it's uh, still in our homes. But um, you just if you need to get your family together, your spouse together, uh, or if you just want to get together with the Lord by yourself, um, but just draw close to him in, in prayer. And especially remember um, our, our district officials, our state officials, our national officials um, and leadership as they make these announcements in these difficult times. Uh, continue to pray for our church, uh, that we'll continue to finish our work that we're doing in the basement. Um, and also um, for the revival that the Lord is preparing us for. So pray uh, with us on Tuesday. And also remember um, our, our service time together on uh, Thursday. Uh, we will not be in the building this week. Um, I will let you know um, when we will be able to go back to um, our service times regularly scheduled. But um, as for now, if you... Um, Get these uh, wonderful either recorded messages or through YouTube messages. I hope it blesses you and you are able to be inspired by it. So uh, uh, I'm praying for you and I hope and, and, and pray that you will continue to um, find peace and hope and courage during these, these times. Just remember God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power of love and that sound mind. Um, as I was reflecting um, on a song uh, that um, uh, a man, I, uh, I'm trying to think of his name right now, and it's not coming to me, but um, there's a, a there's a song that has been sung. Um, uh, well, is um, keep believing. Keep believing in what you know is true. Keep believing. And so I, I know the power that will see us through. It, it's, it's here. It's now. It's, it's all around us. But we have to put our trust in his hand. We have to have that hope that he is uh, walking with us and that he is filling us with his love and his, his peace. He's filling us with his presence. And so the, Proverbs 23, 23 says, buy the truth and sell it not. And I know in this time and day and hour that there's a lot of people that want to get out there and and use scams or use false claims that this will save us or that will save us or but you can't turn to those things you can't listen to those things you you need to listen to the lord and 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 just like we need to listen to our our district officials our state officials our our national officials and, and not try to listen to the other voices that always want to try to interpret what's being said we need to listen directly to him and and understand that these people are trying to watch out for us and trying to truly protect us. And so I pray today that you understand that God is the same. God wants to protect us. God wants to save us. But if we take other people's opinions or other voices that are out in the world, sometimes we can sell out to those voices and we can think things that are not always true. Um, for example, some people say this is the last days and some people uh, don't. Well, don't don't sell yourself short, short and be ignorant or lack of understanding. That's what ignorant means. We have to be mindful. These are the last days and these are preparing us for his coming. Jesus is coming back faster than we can even imagine. And, you know, if the church in the Old Testament was persecuted and revival came out of persecution, we as the church, the body of Christ, should have hope today. We, we don't need to be afraid of this thing. We don't need to be afraid of, of our life immediately changing. I've stepped outside now. 
I just wanted to let you know that we still have air to breathe. We still have a song to sing in our hearts. The birds are singing. It is a beautiful day. You know, there's nothing to fear. There's nothing to worry about. And, and I was remembering back to the other day, if you, um, if you remember the last time we were together and we were talking about on that Thursday night, how that um, the memorials that we build in our life. You know, these are the times and the seasons that those memorials become so important to us because these are the times that our faith becomes tested. These are the times that when we walk through, you know, David said, when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear. Nothing will come upon me. Nothing will harm me. You know, and, and I'm not saying we're going to die. I'm not saying that these are seasons that we have to be so scared that we can't walk outside. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that we have the freedom to walk outside and breathe the fresh air. We have the freedom to, to rejoice. We have the freedom to, to be um, who God made us to be. At the same time, we just need to be cautious. We need to protect ourselves. We don't need to be in very large crowds. You, If you are over a particular age, the, there are warnings out there that tell us that we need to um, be more cautious and careful. And I worry about you. I worry about each of you. But each of you, from who I know that you are, have had... Uh, many of testings throughout your life. You have had many times that the Lord has prepared your faith and, and you have gone through things, but God has brought you out and you have been an overcomer, you know, and, and I am so thankful for that. I'm so thankful for you who have overcome. You have, you have not sold out. You have not listened to the other voices, but you have held to, to the truth. You have been true to to your walk with God. And, and that, my friend, is a testimony. That, my friend, is a memorial that will be brought up. And, and I don't know if you read in your little books that I handed out to you, but the end of our lesson that we were talking about on the value of memorials, um, it was our first lesson that we did. I hope to do another one here shortly um, this week. But we were talking about the old landmarks that were left by godly fathers will guide us down the pathway of truth. Those old landmarks, the Bible talks about, don't remove those landmarks because those landmarks become valuable to us. We can go back now and we can look when we, it's just us at home or it's just our family at home. We can go back and look at those moments and look at those tests of times. Jeremiah 16, 16, he says, thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the way, see and ask of the old paths, where is the good way and walk therein. See, each of you have those memories of those faith. Each of you have those opportunities. And so, you know, we, we have to avoid the pitfalls by having the good knowledge of God's faith and God's word and the grace that he has given us to, to get around or to walk around those pitfalls and not trap ourselves with the voices of this world, with the voices of the things that are going on in this world, because that's what the enemy wants to do. The enemy wants to, to get us down. The enemy wants to get us depressed. The enemy wants to cause us to go into our, our little cave and, and hibernate, so to speak. Well, you don't have to do that. God has given us these wonderful, valuable memorials that we can live by and that we can hold up as a heritage, a heritage of our gospel, because we are his body. We are the church of the living God. And so I'm so thankful today that um, as we reflect on that heritage, as we reflect on our faith and in these uncertain times, we have the hope, we have the insurance to know that God is with us. So buy the truth and sell it not. And I know that as each of you continue to walk in, in through this, don't just remember, know that you're not alone. We are all in this together. And I want you to know that as your pastor, I love you dearly. And I wish each of you a happy and blessed day, a happy and blessed week. And I just pray right now for you that these essential memorials that you have already put up, that you have already established, and that you have already understand, these, these things are 
are blessings to us through the grace of God. The, these opportunities that he have to hold on to, to go back to and to say, this, my God is going to be a testimony to me this these things these memorials are going to to be a testimony of faith to to my friends to my family and i know and, and i've said it up to a jillion times there is a revival coming out of this there is something good that is about to happen we just as the body of christ we as the church have to hold on just hold on don't let our fear be succumbed. Don't don't let the surroundings take us down. Don't don't let things in this earth cause us to get sidetracked. And most importantly, don't listen to those voices that try to tell you that God is not in this. I don't know how and I don't know when, but I know that God is going to make a way. He has to. We are his church. And he promised that he's coming back for us. He said in John chapter 14 verse number 1. I have gone to prepare you a place. And with that where I am ye might be also. He is getting us ready. And so I thank God for that. I thank God for his power. Let this time be a time to establish your memorials. Or let this time go back and remember the memorials. That the Lord has already brought you through. So that you can overcome afresh and anew. God bless you, Dyer United Pentecostal Church. We look forward to seeing you again. I hope this will be over with soon so we can be together again. I can come and visit you. But until then, here we are together in spirit. Heavenly Father, I thank you right now for this church. I thank you for each one of their lives and for their families. I just pray that you do a great work in them today. Put your angels around about them to, to help just do a, a mighty powerful thing in them with hope, with understanding, with love, with peace, with your angels, with your presence. And I give you the praise for it. I pray that as, as we work to finish out different projects, Lord, that you'll give us the time, the ability, the help, the strength to do that. I pray for the finances of the church, Lord. Even though we're not together, the finances of the church still go on. I pray somehow that you meet those finances, God. Because you are the great I am. You are the giver of life. And, and we want to honor you by that with our tithes and our offerings. And, and with our sacrificial givings of support for the building. God, I thank you for these things. And I just pray right now that you would just bless every home with your presence. Bless every home with the angels about them. Just bless every home with your healing virtue, touching them, knowing with the security and the faith that they are in your hands, in your care, and that you have not forgotten them. I thank you for it, Jesus, and I give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. And let the church say,